Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of video games. We cover all kinds from the mainstream to the indie, so I hope you enjoy your stay, and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. While everyone else is doing what they can to prep for the next trip into the void, the Warrior of Light heads to Razat Han to check up on the guard who was watching out for the weird void scent that had split into pieces when it made its way to the source. The creature still doesn't seem like it's all that dangerous, but the fact that some of its pieces are still missing has the guard a little worried. He knows that the other pieces are somewhere in the city, but no one's been able to get a lead on them. He also can't understand what the thing is saying, so that doesn't help all that much either. As luck would have it, the Void Scent senses the rest of its pieces nearby when the Warrior of Light arrives. There's four of them, and just like before, if the Warrior of Light tracks them down, they'll tell their stories about the strong Void Scent that they've seen. It's just as good of a deal as it was the last time, so the Warrior of Light heads off to find them. She finds the first one near some water. Apparently it had liked how the water looked and decided to take a little dip in it, but with it being the size of a grapefruit with no arms or legs, it kinda got washed downstream. It got tossed aside when it got fished up by a not too happy fisherman, and then you came along. The Void Scent thinks it's had enough adventure for a lifetime and is ready to head back to the other pieces, but it owes you a story, so it tells you a tale about two fisherman brothers, one of them being him. He used to fish a lot with his brother, but the Contra Memoria messed up the ocean's ether and most of the fish died. It became a struggle for them to survive, and his brother finally got sick of the whole thing. He was bored with the repetitive nature of his life and had just decided to head off and join the war for no other reason than he wanted something to do. And apparently all of that fishing made him really strong which I don't understand but we're gonna just go with it. He would charge into battle barehanded and beat the crap out of anybody no matter what side they fought for. As long as they were alive and pretty strong he wanted to fight them and that was the only thing that made him feel alive. His brother heard rumors about the strange man who would show up on the battlefield and fight anyone still standing before leaving which is how he knew that his brother still lived, and the people who talked about him called him Cognazzo. Cognazzo's brother thinks that the best thing that happened to him was he became a void scent, and he hopes that his brother managed to find what he was looking for. With finding the next piece, the Warrior of Light gets to hear the next part of the story. Cognazzo as a void scent was the only one who did things in reverse. Where other void scent hunted weaker creatures for food, Cognazzo would go after anyone that he thought was stronger than he was. He would set traps for them and drown them, and one after another the strongest Void Scent were beaten by him. And that still wasn't enough to make him happy. He didn't know what it was that he wanted, not until he met Golbez. The big armored Void Scent stepped into his domain, and after he survived Kanyazo's first attack, the Void Scent knew who Golbez was. Word had spread that the man was going around looking for really strong Void Scent, and Kanyazo is more than willing to give him a fight. He misread Golbez's intentions, however. The man doesn't go around fighting strong people for the sake of it. He is curious about why Cognazzo does it, because he knows it's not because the creature is hungry. He proves that by giving him a lot of very pure ether that only satisfies his hunger for just a moment. It's because what Cognazzo is hungering for is a real battle, and he'll only get that if he can find foes who can really push him to his limits. Golbez promises that if he joins him, he'll never run out of strong opponents, and that's how Cognazzo joined forces with Golbez. With that story done, the Warrior of Light hunts down the third Void Scent fragment and it tells her about the day that her mother died in the Contra Memoria and about the people who put her down. Way back in the day there were two powerful mages who spent their time training at the top of Mount Ordeals. One day some monsters started attacking nearby villages, so the two mages decided that they'd use their powers to save the world. They left the mountain and started killing the creatures, but when a little girl screams at one of the mages not to kill her mother, he hesitates and gets himself killed. The other mage uses his powers to seal the Void Scent woman away in a crystal before she can kill the little girl. Seeing how he had failed to save the woman and lost his friend in the process, he realizes that his claim that he was going to save the world was nothing but talk. Because of how red his face was when he got angry at himself, the little girl named him Rubicante, which isn't bad when you compare it to a lot of the other nicknames children have given to people. 
Rubicante took his fallen friend back up the mountain and buried him there. Then he continued training alone. One day, the little girl left the crystal that her mother had become on the grave as a sign of gratitude to Rubicante for saving her. That one little act made him leave the mountain again and head out into the world to try and do some good. The last Void Sent piece tells the Warrior of Light of how Rubicante ended up working for Golbez. He spent his time as a Void Sent keeping a beacon fire lit, which didn't really serve a purpose since Void Sent don't need light to see, but Rubicante did it anyway. And because he did it despite being mocked by other Void Sent, the little Void Sent ended up helping him keep the fire lit. Whenever it would go out, he would let Rubicante know, and the Void Sent would come by and restart the fire. He did this over and over until the day that Golbez showed up. Even Golbez can feel how powerful Rubicante is, but he can't understand why the Void Sent is wasting that power to keep that fire lit. Even Rubicante doesn't know why he's doing it, but he knows that seeing the flames puts him at peace. He didn't have enough power to fully understand his own feelings, so Golbez tosses him a bit of pure ether, and that lets Rubicante understand what he liked about the fire. It reminded him of the sun. Even though the sun was gone from the void, Rubicante was trying to recreate it with his magic. Golbez wants to restore the world to how it was before as well, and since Rubicante wants the same thing, he joins him. But saving the world will come at the price of killing everyone on the source. To save his own world, Rubicante was more than willing to have the death of another world's people on his conscience. Being on the source, the little void sin understands why Rubicante was willing to kill everyone to experience that again. Now with the last Void Scent piece recovered, the creature recombines into its full form which is both more ugly and more dangerous than it was before. But there's no way to send it back to the 13th at the moment, so the question is what to do with it. It turns out the creature can sense other Void Scent really far away, which would be a very useful ability to have. And since it wants to stay on the source, it's more than willing to make a pact with the soldiers of Razad Han to do just that. This concludes the story of the Archfiends. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, ding that notification bell, and if you really want to show your support, you can donate to the channel through the link in the description. Until next time guys, later.